This is going to be a study on the subject of which lives matter to you. Romans 13, 8 through 10 says, O no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So how does love fulfill the law? It's because if you truly love your neighbor, every person, every life you come in contact with, then you're not going to break these simple commandments. It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. If you love your neighbor, every person, you're not going to commit adultery with his wife. You're not going to commit adultery against your wife. You see, people say living for God is no fun. Okay, just because you know, he's got these simple commands for you to follow you think, well, God's taken away all my fun. But the commandments of God are good and beneficial to everyone because every person's life matters. You know, there's more than ten commandments in the Bible. Paul's got all kinds of commandments wrote down in his epistles. And you'll notice that all of them have to do with if, if you love your neighbor and you love God, you'll easily be able to go without breaking these commands. But let's look at these commands that he's got listed here. The first one, thou shalt not commit adultery. I mean, think about it. How is that taking away your fun? Do you want your husband or wife to commit adultery on you? I know that people get a temporary thrill from committing adultery. But the Bible says in Hebrews 11.25, the pleasures of sin only last for a season. And 1 Timothy 5.6 says, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Are you just living for that temporary thrill? That's not going to bring you happiness. Maybe happiness for a little bit. Committing adultery and things like that. Or even drinking. Someone said, I, I just like drinking. But is it right? Just because you like something doesn't automatically make it right. You know, my, st my flesh still likes a lot of things that it liked before I was saved. For example, you know, I can hear a song that I used to listen to before I was saved. I could hear that in the store or when I pull up next to somebody at a red light and my flesh just starts tapping my feet along with that song. That doesn't mean that song's good just because my flesh still likes wicked music. I have to choose not to listen to wicked music. I have to choose not to do certain things. Just like if you were an alcoholic before you were saved, you're going to have to fight it and choose not to drink alcohol. Just because you like something doesn't make it right. Just because you think a woman at work is beautiful and you want to commit adultery with her and you like her, that doesn't make it right to take that woman and commit adultery. Some guys put their woman crush Wednesday on their social media and women put their man crush Monday on there and yet they're married and I'm thinking so it's okay to lust after another person as long as it's like a celebrity or something. I'm thinking how stupid is that? Just because, you know, that's a celebrity and you don't really know the person doesn't mean it's okay for you to lust after them and then put it on Facebook and Instagram to show everybody how stupid you are because you're lusting after somebody that's not your wife. That's, ri that's ridiculous stupidity. In Matthew 5, 28, it says, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. How many idiotic men take pictures or have a picture of a woman some celebrity half naked on their facebook saying this is my woman crush wednesday and uh, you know their wife 
uh, obviously is on their friends list. And she goes on there, gets up and sees, you know, he's got a woman crush Wednesday on there. How do you think that makes her feel? That man has adultery in his heart. It starts in your heart. Same thing for a woman. She starts putting that crap on uh, Facebook. She's got adultery in her heart. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Are you one of these men that go around and in front of your wife, you're just saying, talking about how hot these other girls are and you're sitting down there watching a movie and every time a girl walks on the screen, you're like, man, she's hot. You know, you're not loving your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. All you love is yourself. Your wife's life does not matter to you. You got adultery in your heart. But you see, love is giving, not getting. Everybody just wants to get things. But the Bible teaches love is giving. In Romans 15, 3, it says, For even Christ pleased not himself. Philippians 2, 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Which lives matter to you, just your own or your spouse's and other people's spouse's? If, if people's life really matter to you, then you're not going to commit adultery. When you commit adultery, what you're saying is your wife, her life doesn't matter. And the woman you commit adultery with, her life doesn't matter. And her husband's life doesn't matter. Because when you commit adultery, you're going to ruin your life. You're going to ruin her life. You're going to ruin your wife's life. And you're going to ruin that woman's husband's life. Uh, and then the children. Take into account the children that you're affecting. You're selfish. So thou shalt not commit adultery. And then another one, thou shalt not kill. I mean, this is obvious here. Exodus 20 and verse 13 says, thou shalt not kill. Okay, is God taking away your fun because he said not to kill somebody? I mean, that's a good commandment. All these commandments are good. I mean, come on, do you want someone to kill you or your family or your friends? I don't see anybody that thinks that that they want to be killed by somebody. I mean, how is that taking away your fun? <clears throat> and then, I truly believe murderers should be put to death. I believe in capital punishment because everybody's life matters. You have taken a life, now yours should be taken. Uh, God believes that life is so valuable that if you go uh, and take it upon yourself to take someone's life, then it's only right if somebody takes yours. And this is taught all the way through the Bible. Starting in Genesis 9, 6, when Noah gets off the ark, the Lord says, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. You know, if you shed another man's blood, it's only right that someone shed yours. Numbers 35, 16, and 17 says, And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, or with he may die and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And this isn't just for black people. This is for anybody. It's wrong for you to kill anybody. All lives matter. It's wrong for a black man to kill a white person. It's wrong for a white person to kill a black person. It's wrong for anybody to kill anybody. And it shows how stupid this country is when people are making a big deal, more of a deal about a white, uh, a white man killing a black man than they are a black man killing a white person. It's all bad. It, it's bad that the, the, the police officer killed the black man. But you can't just single that out over all the other ones. It says in Acts 25, 11, For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. So that was Paul showing he's for capital punishment for murder. If a white 
doctor, a white man that's a doctor, kills an unborn black baby, he's a murderer. Unborn black babies' lives matter. And it's not that you can't get forgiveness for being a murderer if you've murdered somebody. But you still, you're still you going to have to pay for the crime. Now, think about this. With this commandment of thou shalt not kill, would it be broke less or more if you took away the police? You got people that are so crazy they want to take the police away. Romans 13, 1 through 3 says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. You see, that rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. So do you think you would have more killing with cops or without cops? Are you more likely to have someone break into your house and shoot you and rape your wife if there was no cops to call on or if there was cops to call on? Romans 13, 4 says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good, but... If thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You see, God appoints people to be a revenger of evil and as a deterrent to crime, so that more crime doesn't go on. You now, the police is here to keep you safe. In Romans 13, 5 through 7, it says, Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay you tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. You should honor the authority of police officers, even though there are corrupt cops. Of course there's corrupt cops, but one corrupt, some corrupt cops doesn't make all cops corrupt. And if you want rid of the cops, that proves you're corrupt. Because who, who in their right mind would want rid of a cop, the cops? Because you're wanting to go out and bust windows in and steal stuff and do a bunch of crazy stuff. It's like this. If they got rid of the cops today, the same people burning down buildings and breaking into auto zone and target will come to your house break in your house rape your wife beat and torture you take your kids and put them in some sex trafficking and you know burn your house down because they're crooked and they want rid of the police so that they can be a bunch of heathen and act like the devil basically now, my belief on police and government is this. We're to, to obey them and tell what they say go against what God says. Acts 5.29 says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Now, these people that post these videos of uh, uh, these black people, they post videos of white people, pull, white cops pulling them over, uh, you see that, I mean, why are they getting pulled over? Are they getting pulled over because they're black or because they're going 100 and a 30? Are they getting pulled over because they're black or because they've been drinking and driving? You know, if, if I'm drinking and driving, I need to be pulled over. If a white man's drinking and driving, I want him to be pulled over and he needs his license taken away because if you're drinking and driving, then the only life that matters to you is your own life. And actually, your life doesn't even matter to you because you're putting your own life in danger. If you're driving intoxicated, then what about all these other people on the road? Do those lives matter to you? Or is it just black people who are killed by white cops' lives that matter to you? You shouldn't kill anybody. No, it's racist to kill somebody by the color of their skin. And like I was talking about, you shouldn't kill babies either. 
I feel sorry for people if they're more concerned with uh, um, black men being killed by white cops than they are unborn black babies being killed every day. Black babies' lives matter. And, and I'm, I'm confused by people who, who are against capital punishment. They'll want to keep a murderer alive and not put him to death, but they'll kill an innocent baby. They're against capital punishment, but they're for abortion. How stupid. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. An unborn baby has blood. He's got life. Luke 141, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist, in his mother's womb, leaped in his mother's womb. And you say, well, that's just John the Baptist. Why would he be any different than me and you? And Jeremiah 1, 5, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So before Jeremiah was even formed, the Lord knew him. And imagine, you know, all these people in the Bible, that they got their names before they were even born. Isaac, John the Baptist, and Jesus were all named before their birth. God had plans for them before they were even born. What if their parents decided to abort them? Abortion is murder. Unborn babies, even though they can't talk, they can't defend themselves, I mean, they don't help the world or anything yet, their lives matter. Just as much as a black man who's killed by a white cop. Which lives matter to you? I think you're the racist. If you're the one pretending that only black lives matter. Now, what's that next commandment there in Romans 13? Thou shalt not steal. Okay, that's a good one for today. Do looters, looters, do they believe all lives matter? Or is it just their life that matters? Ephesians 4.28 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Thieves are only loving themselves. The only life that mattered to them was theirs, not the person they were stealing from. Think about it. This is a good commandment. It's not taking away your fun. Do you want someone to steal your stuff? Uh, drug addicts will steal from their own family to satisfy their addiction. A murderer steals someone else's life from them. Do you want someone coming into your house and stealing your stuff? What did Target and AutoZone and all these stores have to do with a black man being killed by a white cop? Why did that give anybody the right to go steal, steal things out of the store? They're doing that because they're lazy and they don't want to get their carcass out of bed and go to work and pay for it. If everybody's life mattered to you, you wouldn't steal from people. Okay, what's another one? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Another good commandment. Because do you want someone telling lies to you? That's not taking away your fun. Gossip or someone who spreads rumors and bearing false witness is showing that all lives do not matter to them because you can kill someone's testimony you can kill someone's reputation with your lying tongue. James 3, 8 says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Are you killing people with that tongue in your mouth? Running your mouth constantly? Does all lives matter to you or just yours? Another one, thou shalt not covet. You're desiring something that is not right for you to have. If you're coveting. And Exodus 20:17 really sheds light on what the word means. It says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So you see the connection to murder. Why do people murder people? Because they're wanting something that they have, usually. Why do people lie to people? Because they're wanting something that they have. Stealing, they're, they're coveting what they have. Looters are covetous. 
they're seeing all these stuff in the store and they're using all this that stuff going on as an excuse to go in and steal what they're coveting adulterers are covetous if you work in a factory you see it every day these men come into the factory and you got other men's wives working there and immediately they're coveting their neighbor's wife they're so unsatisfied with their wife that they want all these other people's wives at the factory. they are got adultery in their heart. They can't get content. <clears throat> First Timothy 6, 8 says, And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Philippians 4, 11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Be content <clears throat> with what God has given you in this life. You don't want people coveting what you got, so why are you coveting what everybody else has? Do all lives matter to you, or just yours? Rioters do not believe that all lives matter. First Peter 4, 4 says, Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. They think it strange if you don't go out and do what they're doing. The problems would be fixed if people realized everybody's life matters. Your neighbor, his life matters. Problems would be fixed if people loved their neighbor as their self. I'm going to be nice to black people. I'm going to treat black people the same. You can love a black person just as much as you do a white person. And I, if you say that I'm racist, then you're saying I'm racist for saying all people are equal. All people are equal. Jesus died for a black man just like he did a white person. But your neighbor's life matters. Leviticus 19.18 says, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. What if every person you saw, you treated them like you wanted to be treated? Matthew 19.19, 19, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Matthew 22.38 and 39, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If that cop loved people the way he should have, he could have put his knee somewhere else. If, you know, if, <clears throat> if these people who are all about the Black Lives Matter, if they loved people, they wouldn't treat people like they do. Be nice to everybody because everybody's life matters. Galatians 5, 14 and 15 says, For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you do that, then you're not going to have a problem with any of the commandments. But it says, But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one another. Think about someone else's feelings before you say something about them. James 2, 8 and 9 says, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Each and every life matters according to Jesus Christ. There is equal opportunity with Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 6 says, Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. 1 John 2, 2, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Whatever color you are, you got your sins. But Jesus paid for them on the cross. Now all you have to do is accept the payment. And Romans 10, 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's equal opportunity with Jesus. And I mean, there's equal opportunity in America. If Stephen Curry makes $490,000 per game, there's equal opportunity. Where else can he go and do that? I'd, I'm not even going to make that in the rest of my life. I mean, is that racist? I'm a white man, and he's going to make way more than me. 
Where's my equal? Is it? Do I not have equal opportunity? The president only makes four hundred thousand a year. The president, and Stephen Curry makes four hundred ninety thousand dollars per game. We say, well, he's he's not black enough. Okay, well, LeBron James makes almost two million per week. If this country is so racist, then why do we spend billions of dollars going to see LeBron James and Stephen Curry? And James Harden. I mean, when I watch basketball, you know, I'd rather see, like if I was going to watch an old game, I'd rather watch Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson more than Larry Bird. Larry Bird's not fun to watch. Who's who's all the fun people to watch in basketball? It's the black players. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, James Harden, all these people like that, Allen Iverson. I mean, that's just, if, if we're so racist in this country, then why are children's role models the, the black athletes? When I grew up, my, um, my sports heroes wasn't Brian Scalabrini or Larry Bird. It was Allen Iverson, Tracy McGrady, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, all these people like that. There's... Equal opportunity in America. I have black supervisors over me. There's tons of black people where I work that make a lot more money than I make. The wicked rapper Jay-Z has a net worth of $1 billion. Dr. Dre has $800 million. Oprah has $2.6 billion. Sounds like there's equal opportunity to me. I mean, there's stuff goes that goes on that's not fair. But, I mean, if, if a black person gets up and gets out of bed and goes to work, then he's going to be successful in this country. You know, all you got to do to be successful in worldly standards is get your lazy butt up out of bed and go to work and make money. And then you can have money to buy a house and a car and clothes for your family and food on the table. It's like I don't understand what people don't understand about, you know, getting a job and that's how you make money. It's like they'll get a house or an apartment and then they're they're wondering after they quit their job why they don't have rent money. And then they got to go on the side of the street with a sign begging people for their money. What you're telling them is, what you're telling me is, when you're standing out on the corner in 100 degree weather, you're telling me that you're too lazy to work, so you're just going to take my hard earned money when you're just as much able to go out and work as I am. I mean, I see people that look able bodied men out on the street corner in 100 degree weather. If you can do that, you can go work somewhere. I mean, that's, that's hard work to just stand out there in 100 degrees it's crazy this country this whole country is crazy and if you're buying into all this black lives matter garbage you're thinking very crazy all lives matter to say to single out one race and say that those lives matter i mean you're kind of being racist there and then you're not even saying all black lives matter it's just the black lives who are killed by white cops or by white people. Uh, that's crazy. <clears throat> and then you got all the sports stuff with the the Black Lives Matter on the basketball court and all the stuff they did in the Major League Baseball. That stuff is so stupid, and I I don't ever want to watch a sports game again if they're going to do that kind of stuff because they're trying to just put that stuff in your face and brainwash people. And make people not get along. See, all this stuff, it makes... When, when black people watch TV, they say, well, all white men just hate black people. Which is not true. When the white man watches TV, and he sees the black people doing all the looting and, and rioting and saying idiotic things, that makes him think, well, black people are just crazy and violent. Which, that's not true. That's all the black people that I know none of them are like 
the ones on that you're seeing on TV. And all the white people I, I know, they're not like the people you see on TV. I mean, people... I mean, I just don't see the the big racism thing as much as these people are trying to get you to believe. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not stupid. I know there's racism that goes on, but it's nothing like what they're portraying on TV to brainwash people. But think about it. Which lives matter to you? If people's lives matter to you, then it says, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. You should love a black man enough to treat him like you want to be treated. If you see him, he needs help, give him help. If you see anybody, you know, that needs kindness, then you should be kind to that person no matter the color of their skin. But this has been a quick study on which lives matter.